for today's video we are going to break down one of the most recent advancement in image generation that is called diffusion models hello everyone welcome to our very first video on the series bits bytes and beyond in this series we are going to be breaking down complex concepts for you in simple terms and easy to understand explanations all the things that you've heard about stable diffusion and dali wherein you're converting text to an image is an implementation of diffusion models so without going into much mathematical details let's see how does diffusion work diffusion is that process in thermodynamics where particles move from a high density to a low density area or a high energy to a low energy area this is the concept that the very first paper on diffusion was based on deep unsupervised learning using non equilibrium thermodynamics the authors of the paper said our goal is to define a forward process which converts any complex data distribution into a simple tractable distribution and then learn a finite time reversal of this diffusion process which defines our generative model distribution now this may seem very very confusing and odd to you but let me put it in simple terms so our diffusion model is based on the principle of learning the systematic decay of information by adding noise so for in this case if we have a flower and we are going to add a lot of noise to it and this still looks like a flower and we'll add more noise to it and by the end we have an unrecognizable flower but diffusion process is based on first learning the systematic decay and then reversing this process by iteratively removing that noise simply by having access to the previous state of the image let's suppose we have this beautiful flower in the forward diffusion we are going to take up this image at time step 0 we are now going to gradually destroy this image by adding noise to it in the start we'll add little noise to it so with every time step we will keep increasing the amount of noise we are adding so let's say this is the next time step which is t equals to 1 and we will continue this process and with each time step add more and more noise until we have nothing but noise left that is what our final image would look like at time step t equals to capital t which is nothing but noise now the goal of our diffusion model is to reverse this process by training a neural network to return to our original image by knowing its distribution at the previous step so like we saw in the noising process our image at a certain time step t will be the combination of our image at the previous step plus the noise that has been added at t minus 1 there are two things that are needed to be kept in mind one the noise that we are adding to a diffusion model is always gaussian noise because gaussian noise always sums up well and because we are adding gaussian noise towards the end we are left with nothing but a gaussian distribution and the other thing to remember is that this noise is always being added in some sort of a schedule now we add a little bit amount of a noise first and then maybe increase it in a definite manner or we add the same amount of noise at every step this helps our model to know how much noise is there at a particular time step so let's say at a certain time t equals to 50 our image is the combination of the image at t equals to 49 and the noise that was added in the previous step now in the reverse process we provide our model with a noisy image and the time step at which that noisy image is at so for example this image over here is at time step t equals to 50 and now my model is going to learn to predict the amount of noise that has been added to this image by predicting the distribution of the previous step and then reconstructing the image by removing noise diffusion takes an iterative approach which makes it all the way more stable than gans we take our image and we pass it through a unit shaped network now my model is going to try to calculate all the noise that has been added to our image until the time step that we have provided with it we are going to subtract this noise from our noisy image not to get back our original image but to get an estimate of what the original image looks like now what we are going to do next is we are going to add most of that noise back into our image to get the image at the previous time step hence we'll only reduce some fraction of that noise put back most of that noise so we take this noise and we put most of that noise back which will give us a slightly less noisier image at t equals to 49 now we are going to loop through this process and every time on every loop we are going to get one step closer to our original image this will help to train our model to calculate the gradients of our previous distribution and return to our original image this right here is a much more stable model than a gans model and works out mathematically much easier one more thing to add here 
This unit shaped network is related to an encoder decoder network. This is important to have the perceptual representation of our image, which is simply the compressed form of our raw image. And this helps to keep our dimensions constant throughout the process, unlike that of GANs. Now, this very model can be used to generate in two ways, conditionally and unconditionally. All the news that you see on generative AI nowadays about converting text to image are all conditional diffusion models where we give our model some sort of a condition and our model is able to generate some sort of a visual representative data out of it. Now that is all that we had for our today's video. I hope you were able to grasp the concept of diffusion models if not completely get to know them. And if you want us to break down something for you, let us know in the comments. See you next time.